Yes, we may be prayerful. Yes, we may be reading God's word. Yes, every day we may be associating with one another in love. But friends, if we are not going to ch change our worldview system, our paradigm as far as the world is concerned, then those efforts are useless. So I would like now to have the habits of changing our value system. Apostle Paul said in Romans 12:1, Be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation, paradigm shift of our thinking. And again, Apostle Paul said, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. In other words, there must be a paradigm shift of our thinking from our own selves to that of Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And this gives us the idea that Christian thinking is actually a reality. This gives us the idea that the object reference of our mind must be Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. A paradigm shift of our worldview. So our worldview must be from secular to spiritual habit. You know, because of sin, we have the fallen nature. And because we are fallen, then there is what we call secularity of our practice, of our habits, that we need to transform it into spiritual thinking. One is the pleasure as end to itself. This is what we call the secular paradigm of the world today. Pleasure as end to itself. What is important is I'm happy. We become pragmatic. What is important is I am happy. But friends, we need to change it into knowing God is the greatest source of pleasure. Knowing God is the greatest source of pleasure. It is not pleasure of the world, but it is knowing God as the greatest source of pleasure. And there have been a lot of testimonies that pleasure in this world is not satisfying to the soul. Why? Because in us, there is what we call spiritual vacuum. That that vacuum could not be filled in with something that you do, something that is pleasurable. It could only be filled in by Jesus Christ. I think some of you are aware of the story of one of the most beautiful women in the world, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe one day was found dead. And to make the long story short, they tried to find out what was wrong. Was there a foul play of the death of Marilyn Monroe? And according to the story, the lead was found. Because a note was found in the packet of Marilyn Monroe. And the testimony was, I decided to kill myself because I'm tired of being beautiful. I do not know if the story is true. But it gives us the idea, my friends, that the pleasure of the world will not give us satisfaction in life. But knowing God is the greatest source of pleasure. We can have no higher purpose than to grow in the knowledge of God and by His grace and power to become increasingly like Him. That's why the goal of education is always to increase our knowledge in Him. Knowing God, knowing God, knowing God until we will be able to know Him more clearly. The reason why we cannot love God is because we do not have clear knowledge about God. But my friends, if we have clear knowledge of God, then we will be able to love Him more dearly. And the more we love Him dearly, the more we will be able to follow Him more dearly. That's why the starting point is we need to have clear understanding of God. Another 
secular view is exalts recognition as approval and approval. Friends, let us have to change this kind of worldview. Instead of exalting recognition or exalting recognition and approval, let us go into the spiritual habit of exhorting, seeking the approval of God. Another secular view is the raising wealth status a standard of security and success on identity. I'm not saying that to become wealthy is wrong. I'm not saying that to have money, to have more money is wrong. No. But for my friends, this should not be the main criteria of success and our identity in Christ. So instead of raising wealth status as standard of security, success, and identity, let us elevate the standard of integrity and character. That's the most important. Because Mrs. Ellen G. White said, your spiritual character is your passport to heaven. It is not your wealth. It is not your status. It is not our standard and security in this world, but rather our passport to heaven is our spiritual character. There is also another secular brew which is power over people, but we have to shift it into walking humbly before God. Trusting that the world reveals everything for our happiness, that kind of worldview, that the world can provide everything. Let us change it to the paradigm that the word Jesus is all what it meant to me. Life is about God and not about us. All things have been created by Him and for Him. That's why Jesus Christ should be the main thing in our life. So, temporal value system versus eternal value system. Pleasure, moving into knowing God, recognition of people to approval of God, popularity to servanthood, power, humility. Friends, if you follow the temporal value system, it will only lead to emptiness, delusions, foolishness. But if you follow knowing God, approval of God, servanthood, humility, you will have fulfillment, spiritual fulfillment. You will experience heavenly reality and you will have discernment and that is spiritual wisdom. The, hum the habit of humble attitude. Follow Christ on the path of humility. This is the solution, Philippians 2.1.8. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. That's the model. How we are going to overcome pride and selfishness. Now the encouragement of Apostle Paul is in Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So what kind of attitude that could be considered as attitude, as antidote to pride and selfishness? We can see it in the very verses that we have read from Philippians 2, 5, 11. First, in Philippians 2, 5, 6, it says, He thought others, not himself. Therefore, Jesus Christ's attitude was a selfless attitude. Selfless. Selfless attitude. Philippians 2.8, he humbled himself. Therefore, his attitude was humble. He obeyed. Philippians 2.8, therefore, his attitude was obedient attitude. Philippians 2.7, he served. Therefore, his attitude was a serving attitude. And then in Philippians 2.8, he sacrificed. Therefore, Jesus Christ had a sacrificing attitude. And then in Philippians 2, 9 to 11, he glorified God. Therefore, the attitude of Christ was glorifying and sanctifying attitude. This must be the attitude that we need to have. 
So if we have this attitude, for sure, we will be able to shift from this world to being a servant of righteousness. This attitude will bring us from being servant of sin to servant of righteousness. So instead, according to Romans 6, 10 to 23, there is a play of words here. Instead of having lust, we will be developing love. Instead of being instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, we become instrument of righteousness unto God. Instead of being disobedient to His word, then we will be obedient in the heart. Instead of being dead unto sin, we will become alive unto God. Instead of being unclean, then we will become holy. Instead of being iniquitous, then we will become righteous. Instead of having the wages of sin, we will have the gift of God. And instead of reaping death, we will have everlasting life. This begins with our attitude. That's why Jesus, Apostle Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ. Be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind, because we will only be able to have this servant of righteousness if we have the Christian mind. So friends, the basis of our spirituality must not be ourselves. Sometimes we brag about what we can do. But my friends, the basis of our spirituality is not self, but Christ. Why? Because it's self is the basis of our spirituality, the determinant point of our spirituality. Then the problem is there will be comparison. And then as we compare with ourselves, we start competing with one another. And then if we cannot fulfill that kabitus life, then we will start competing with one another. And once we compete with one another, then it goes down. Sometimes we compromise principle. That's why self is not the basis of spirituality. But Christ must be the basis of our spirituality. Why? Because if Christ in us, we will be able to develop the gift that we have. So that is what we call contentment in ourselves. And then if we develop that little gift that we have, then we will develop it. And then we become competent, and then we become compassionate, and then we develop Christian character. That's why the basis of spirituality should be Christ, not self. All of you, Peter said, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that she may lift you up in due time. The feeling of a new man will also be the experience of God's people if they start with a Christian mind. So spirituality actually is moving from the old man to the new man. And this is what Ephesians 4, 24, 33 says. Put away lying Instead, put on truth. Put away anger. And then put on compassion. Stealing. Labor that is good. Corrupt communication. Pure speech. Bitterness. Tender-hearted. Wrath. Forgiveness. Complaining. Understanding and unity. This is what it means to be spiritual. Mother Teresa was asked, why she was very, very spiritual. And this is the response of Mrs. Of, uh, Mother Teresa. She was asked, Mother Teresa, why your life is so spiritually strong, spiritually authentic? And this is the response of Mother Teresa. She said, I use for my lips truth. I use for my voice kindness. I use for my eyes compassion. I use for my hands charity. I use for my figure uprightness. I use for my heart love. I use for any home do not like me prayer. This is what it means to have spiritual life. Another important aspect that we have to consider if we want to live a spiritual life, then there should be no competing habit and attitude in the church. 
I have seen this in many of our churches. We keep competing in one another. Even our programs, we compete with one another. But let us follow these principles, important principles from the scripture. Second Corinthians 10, 12, it is unwise to compare among ourselves. Romans 12, 10, we should show preference to one another. Matthew 20, 25, 28, do not strive for selfish honor, but serve others selflessly. Galatians 5, 28, there should be no provoking to envy. Galatians 6, 4, none should boast by comparing himself with his neighbor. And Proverbs 24, 17, do not rejoice when your enemy stumbles. How I wish, and I will pray, that there will be no more competition, competing attitude in the church. If we want to grow in our spirituality, we grow in prayer, reading of his words, loving with one another, humbling ourselves, no competing with one another. And if you do this, as uh, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, then the end result, that he may lift you up in due time. If we are going to practice all those habits of authentic spirituality, reading his word, prayer, loving with one another, no competition, and all those things, then the assurance of God is he will lift you up in due time. Let us remember that the man who kneels before God will stand up to anything. We have to trust his promises. This is another habit. I think this is the last habit that we are going to develop. The habit of trusting his promises. You know, we become strong spiritually if we trust him of all his promises. Well, I'm going to share to you some of this paradigm shift. The paradigm of being down to a paradigm of being lifted up. You know our paradigm is sometimes we say, Lord, I'm nothing. But God says, I bid you in my image and likeness. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Sometimes we say in our own paradigm, no one takes care of me, Lord. But God says, I am your shepherd and you will not want and be alone. Sometimes we say, Lord, I have tribulations and crisis. But God says in the world, you have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Sometimes we say, Lord, I'm already tired. But God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sometimes we say, Lord, I can't go on. But God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes we say, Lord, it's impossible. But God says, the things impossible with man is possible with God. Sometimes we say, Lord, I can figure out things. But God says, I will direct your steps. Sometimes we say, Lord, I can't do it anymore. That's too much for me, Lord. But God says, you can do all things. Sometimes we say, it's not worth it. But God says, it will be worth it. Sometimes we say, Lord, I can't manage anymore. But God says, I will supply all your needs. Sometimes we say, Lord, I'm afraid. But God says, I have not given you spirit of fear, but power and of love and of sound mind. Sometimes we say, Lord, I'm not smart enough. But God says, I will give you wisdom. We say, Lord, I feel all alone. But God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Very important as we grow in our spirituality. My friends, I would like to summarize. If we have the humble habit, we will develop humble attitude. If we have humble attitude, we will develop humble disposition. And if we have humble disposition, it will lead us to humble actions. And if we have humble actions, it will lead us to humble character. And if we have humble character, we will develop a victorious Christian life in our leadership, in our membership, and all the things that we do in the church. This is an act of renewal that needs a transformation process. How it can be done? Our pride, our 
proud life should be transformed into a humble life. Proud life against humble life, it will lead us to a deformed thinking and deformed life. But a humble, submissive, prayerful life in Christ passes through Christ under the transformation of His grace and the Holy Spirit, which is an ongoing process. We will be able to stand up victoriously in Christ Jesus. How I wish, and I will always pray, that we will always develop those spiritual habits that we have studied this afternoon. So as our spiritual commitment this evening, I would like you to stand. And let us read. I have prepared something here for our commitment. We have 12 commitments to God this afternoon. And let us pray that somehow we will be able to reflect this in our lives so that every day we will grow in our spirituality. Let us all see this together. Today, I will give my mind and heart to Jesus. I will create a space in my life. I will have the mind of Jesus and let the Holy Spirit dwell in my thoughts. So that what I think, what I decide, and what I do are always according to His will. Today, I will find time with Him in solitude, prayer, personal devotion, and Bible study. I will create a space in my life. And I will faithfully come to him in my devotion, even my home, in my workplace, and other places. Today, I will not strike back. If someone is impatient, if someone is unkind, I will not respond in like manner. Today, I will ask God to bless my enemy. If I come across someone who treats me harshly, or unfairly, I will quietly ask God to bless that individual. I understand the enemy could be a family member, neighbor, co-worker, or stranger. Today, I will be careful about what I say. I will carefully choose and guard my words, being certain that I do not spread gossip, but the gospel, not slander, but peace, not malign, but humility to anyone in any way. Today, I will go to the extra mile. I will find ways to help share the burden of another person. I will find ways to make life more pleasant. Today, I will forgive. I will forgive any hurts or injuries that come my way. I will also work to forgive injuries that have been inflicted upon me in the past. Today, I will do something nice for someone but I will do it secretly. I will do it, I will reach out anonymously and bless the life of another person. Today, I will treat others as I wish to be treated. I will practice the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you with everyone I encounter. Today, I will raise the spirits of someone who is discouraged. My smile, my words, my expression of support can make the difference to someone who is wrestling with life. Today, I will grow spiritually. I will spend a little more time in prayer. Today, I will begin reading something spiritual or inspirational. Today, I will find a quiet place at some point during this day and listen to God's voice. Today, I will endeavor to live up to the expectation of the ministry. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, I will endeavor to live up to the expectation of the ministry. I will commit myself to his calling and be faithful in serving him. So these are our commitments this uh, evening. And I hope 
we are going to live up to these expectations that we have before us. Let us bow our heads forward of prayer. Most gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we humbly come before the throne of grace. We would like to praise you for this opportunity in which we are able to come together to worship you having this prayer wave. Thank you, Lord, for the kind hands that prepare this very program. Thank you, Lord, for those who have shared the resources in such a way that we will be able to have this very, very important program here. And thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that has guided in the formation of this program in such a way, dear Lord, that this will be impressive and will be beneficial to our spirituality. Dear Lord, we are so th thankful that you have guided us this afternoon, especially, dear Lord, for the councils, for the spiritual habits that we need to develop in our spirituality. Kindly, dear Lord, help us to live up to those spiritual habits and help us to live up to those commitments that we had just uttered this afternoon. Loving Father, I pray in a special way for every church member. Kindly be with them. We have struggles with our pride, with our selfishness, and other uh, attitudes that are not conforming to your will. Dear Lord, we pray that somehow your Holy Spirit will work in our heart to banish all those um, attitudes and habits that are contrary to your will. Dear Lord, through your grace, help us to be overcomers in such a way that we will be able to demonstrate a life that is victorious. Dear Lord, I pray for all those who are struggling in their spirituality today. Kindly be with them. Help them, dear Lord, so that they will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Loving Father, I pray for every husband, every wife, and all our church members, kindly be with them, dear Lord. Help them, because it is our longing that the church will grow, and that when you come, all of us will be in that heavenly home prepared for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you will be with us as we have this very important commitment this evening. Assure us with your, your Holy Spirit. Assure us with the grace of Jesus Christ. Assure us, dear Lord, with the promise of life eternal and when Christ will come in the second coming, then all of us will be found in that heavenly home prepared for each one of us. Thank you for your love and care to us. We pray in the loving name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thank you very much. Praise God for this beautiful meeting. We are going to have one more song as we go out, but I have to say the word of thanks. I want to praise God for everyone who has joined us this evening. We give a 100% glory to God. All glory and honor belong to God. I also would like to bring to a kind information. We have prepared food by the grace of God for every one of you here uh, we will not eat here but the food is ready in is one of my friends is just getting ready he's going to take more than 25 minutes to reach here so right after the program we are all going to wait in the parking space please don't go and eat anywhere we have prepared food it's going to be given in the form of uh, uh, the sack supper, we will say. You can take it and, and go. So please don't go and eat in Starbucks or don't go and eat in Yellow Cab. You can put that money for offering. Okay, so we have prepared food for every one of you. Uh, who is that group that is singing? Once you sing, we will leave. We have to actually leave this place because our place, our timing is already uh, very near and we are over. But we will wait in the parking space. Please don't go home. We will be very happy if you eat and then you go. But we have to wait 25 minutes because the food is coming from IS. Is that group still here? That's singing?
please come sir god bless you all we love you and most likely our next meeting here will be during the month of june are you willing to come here again one of the sabbaths please bring everyone and we're going to have three more meetings here somebody just spoke to me and they are willing to really help us we praise god for the good hearts and then we will have a final during october november we are going to have nine days of evangelistic meeting and i was praying lord where will i have this one of the members came to me and said that he is willing to sponsor a nine days meeting continuously right here amen so let's give them a hand okay i do not have the permission to tell the name but i feel like telling but i will not tell because i'm very afraid whether he will not give me the money so praise god for whatever has happened we uh, donors you know who you are i thank you so much they told me i should not tell their names we want to thank everyone we want to thank ronald who has worked so hard aup students i want to thank pastor lee will you stand up i want all of you to give him a good round of applause you have worked so hard amazing so which month we will gather here again the month of june you want to know which date pastor lee will tell you not today but in the email so male and female check your email thank you so much Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yung song na to ay summary po ng Revelation 16. So, ito ay Tagalog version. Yung English version po ay next time na mag-meet ulit tayo dito sa summit. Reads. Do yung mga uh, kayang i-translate po yung song, pakitranslate na lang sa katabi nyo. Mas masarap po kasi siyang awitin sa English. Sabi po ng song ay Hello, meron ba? Ayan um, Yung Revelation 16 ay Nagkakwento about dun sa Seven Last Pledge At uh, Yung chorus naman ay nagsasabi na Nag-remind na ang Diyos ay Tarating Para tayo ay uh, Sunduin at sa time na yon wala na pong hirap at wala na pong lungkot. Darating ang oras, ibu. Sa hula ay pawang matutupan 
ang Diyos nagsasabi na siya ay darating upang tayo kunin at sa langit makarating. Wow!